Good morning, friends. Grace and peace and love and joy be with you all. It is good to see you this morning. It is always good for God's people to gather in God's house, to remember where we come from, to remember who to whom we belong, that we are God's people, and we come home to God's house to tap into God's power in our lives, to gather together and to remember to say thank you, to say help me, to say forgive me. We gather to receive and to be fed so that we can give. We gather in God's house to celebrate all that we know that God is doing. A word of welcome to those who are joining us on live stream. I am returning to this place so that together we can bring the light of Christ into this place. We know that the light is always with us. And we also know that we are responsible for bearing the light. And so we do. Share the light, shine the light, pass the light. Invite and remember that the light is always with us. Let us worship the Lord, our God. May we all stand. May you join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve, Serve the, the Lord, Lord with gladness. gladness. Extol the Lord our God. For, For Lord our God, God is holy.
seated please at this time I would like to invite the children to come forward for some time probably need my mask come on up we're gonna stay by the table this morning we're gonna be right over here yeah you can stay there that's perfect how are you is everybody good good everybody good wow look at this crowd Let's make room, because that's what Jesus does, right? Always makes room for everyone. I love it. I love it. How are you? Is everybody good this morning? Are you fine? Are you sleepy? Who's sleeping? How many people... Um, might like to sleep late on Sunday. <laughs> and how many people know that once you get to church, it's a good decision? Come on now, come on. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. So here's what happens. Pastor Brenda goes away for a weekend and everyone says to Pastor Janice, oh, you need to find someone to be with the children. I think, no way, because I never get to see you up close and personal. So here we are, and here I am. Is that better? Will you hear me a little bit better? So, thank you. So here, this is a very important table. Does anyone know what's prepared here? Go ahead. Sure. The grape juice, good, here. Right, what else? Tell me, yes, yes. And bread, right. And do we have a, do we have a big um, churchy kind of name for grape juice and bread? Yes, please. Yeah, so this is the body and the blood of Jesus, which is what Jesus was reminding us, right, when he served it for the first time. Uh, yes? It's also called communion. Yes, it's called Holy Communion, the Great Mystery. Why is it a mystery, I wonder? Do we remember? Go ahead. The mystery is absolutely why Jesus body bread blood. Why do we do this, right? Okay, so so I'm going to tell you <laughs> how much time do we have, right? Um, I'm not even sure I can do it in the whole hour of the worship service, but I did just spend a little time with the confirmants. That's another responsibility that I wouldn't really let go of when given the opportunity. So um, Jesus was serving a meal, which was part of his religious custom, to his disciples, one sec, to his disciples, the night before he was gonna get arrested. So he knew he was in some trouble, he knew that the outcome was not gonna be great, so he said, this is my body, 
And this is what I like to say, is this is my love. And when you do this together, you bring me close to you. At confirmation class, we talked a little bit about, anybody ever hear the expression, you are what you eat? They, that, they, used, to, they used to say that to us. I'm really old, but when I was little, they used to say, you are what you eat to try to get me to eat more vegetables so I didn't like turn into be a walking like candy bar or something, because I could have done that. You are what you eat. We take in and taste and see that Jesus is amazing and that God is that, is that, oh, Rosie, we need you. You're good, you're good. But where would we be without the baby cry, right? Lost in the world without the baby cry. Um, yeah, for sure. Lost without, it reminds us. It reminds us that we are innocent and that we need to be cared for. So anyway, where was I, right? So we, God is that close. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we're doing what Jesus taught and we're taking him in. Yes, ma'am. Does it matter what type of bread we eat? What do you think? Not sure, right? So here's what I want to say. Before we eat this bread and before we drink this cup, I say a lot of words, right, that bring in the Holy Spirit and say, make these gifts be for us, Jesus' presence with us, that we will eat and drink. So I think the answer is, it doesn't matter, but I do think it matters what we believe is happening, right? That the Spirit, the Spirit is changing, is making this. Okay, so last pit part of the lesson. This was what? Grape, grape juice, good. So what are these? Perfect. So this and this, right? Part, uh, grape juice. For, <laughs> grape juice and love. Can we, can we make the shift to love if, if we struggle with the blood? I think we struggle. Anyway, so Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Make fruit in your life that's delicious for the world. I am the vine, you are the branches. Make fruit in your life for the world. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. We make fruit for the world to love and serve and grow and ripen and plump. Deep love, deep love for the world. So here's, here's what I wanna um, tell you. I've asked your teachers, and you could say, teacher, what's up, are we gonna go back upstairs? I've asked your teachers to bring you back up for Holy Communion today, because we're doing something just a little different. It's even a little out there, but it's very special and very meaningful. And I want you to come and taste and see that the Lord is sweet and delicious and wonderful and love. Will you pray with me? So I'm going to do a little repeat after me prayer, okay? And you're going to, you're going to echo. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for giving us grape juice, us grape juice. that reminds us of your love and grace and mercy and brings you close. Help us to remember that this is your love, that this is your love that we drink and we eat and make you a part of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good job. Have a good class. Hope to see you later. Not too long. Do y'all follow all of that? <laughs> it is one of the harder lessons to do in five minutes, and so we sow seeds. We lay groundwork so that we can bear fruit in our lives. Uh, a couple words of announcements this morning. Um, it, Pastor Brenda is off for the week. It is her birthday. It's a milestone birthday, so you might want to give her a shout out. I hope we can plan for the kids to sing, and uh, I'm sure that all of you will be uh, wishing her well. Uh, Pastor Brenda, uh, we are wishing you a very happy birthday. Um, it will require her on the live stream or the video. Shall we, Holland, give her a, give her a song? That song? That song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Brenda. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'll tell you, I did that once in my first church, and then every week they want, we wanted to sing. So, you know, this, we'll keep this all in check. Anyway, a couple announcements this morning. The, um, there are Connect cards that are in the uh, narthex. Uh, we'll be printing more so they can be in the pews. Sometimes people um, uh, talk about feeling really, really awkward when the plate is passed, when most of us give online, right? And we don't always have the money to or want to throw in more money when we're giving our very generous tithe online. So you can easily throw in a connect card, uh, give us a prayer request, updated phone number information. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you go to morrowchurch.org, if you go to our all links page, not only are there connect cards to get in touch with us, let us know you're with us, let us know if you need anything, uh, you can also uh, let us know so we can stay in touch. Uh, your bulletin for the worship service is there. We are celebrating Holy Communion. I hope you set your tables and participate as best as we can wherever we are. The gathered community has taken new shape and form. And so we do believe that and understand that and seek to grow that in the work that we do. I believe that we have a couple days still if you want to send a Valentine bouquet. Uh, it is the youth fundraiser because we could not do the spaghetti dinner this year. So the uh, youth are putting together bouquets. You can order them. They will deliver them. Uh, and it is a lovely way to remember those we love for uh, the special holiday while supporting our youth uh, in the life of the church to go on service project and mission trip this summer. Likewise, all the dates are in the bulletin. The opportunity to register and plan your summer calendar is here. You can uh, register online. Once again, go through the website or the e-blast and invite your friends and neighbors. You can uh, easily bear witness to the work of Morrow Church by forwarding an e-blast or inviting someone to one of the camps. We're laying a firm foundation for our kids uh, through the camps and the education program. So thank you for doing all of that. The church is busy. Uh, things are uh, well in the spirit, in the body, and we are excited that you are all here this morning. Will you take a minute and just look around you and take a minute and wave to someone you haven't seen in a while because you know they're going to sneak out before you get to say hello. And uh, poor Matt Ellsworth is here with us, and I, you probably can't turn around, can you? <laughs> We're glad you're here, Matt. Glad you're here. Good morning, everybody. It is good to uh, greet each other, see each other. It is good to be seen, and it is good to be seen here as we put ourselves, the gathered community, remembered and membered 
back together. Uh, thank you for your ongoing gifts to the life of the church. Some of you do, many of you do, give online. Thank you for that. Will the ushers come forward for the morning offering? and most holy God, these are the gifts that we give back to you to make you a part of our households, make you a part of our lives. Allow us to contribute to the work beyond us for the world and for the community. Remind us, Lord, that you take a seat at our tables that you are a member of our household, that you will make your presence known and lead us and guide us when we do not know the way. And so we gather here and support the work of the church so that we can be um, grounded in your love, uh, supported by friendships, connected to others on the path and on the journey. And we give these gifts because we want it all to continue and to grow and to be sustained, to make a difference in the world. And so we do. We give, we gather, we do what we do. We dedicate the gifts and pray over them so that you will increase all of our gifts 10,000-fold, as you promise in the scriptures you will. We give, we gather, we do it all in the very, very precious name of Jesus, and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, and amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our most gracious creator, the creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for this day, the day that we get to meet and worship you together. We thank you for being with us through the week. We face different situations during the week, and we thank you for helping us to see you through. Some of us are still trying to overcome our challenges, and we believe that in the fullness of time you make all things beautiful. We kindly ask for courage and strength to face each day and what it carries. Help us to remember that you are God in all situations, and you never let us down. Just as you made a way at the Red Sea, God, you make a way in our lives when it seems to be no way. Just like you provided for the Israelites in the desert, God, you provide for us in our lives. The word, that, the word says that you never change, you remain God. As we live every day, we hear different stories of abuse, violence, natural disasters, and we have also been affected and our friends were affected, families and everyone in this world. We lost our loved ones during the way. May you heal our hearts. May you heal the crowd of family in this time of their loss. May you heal us, Lord, and comfort us. May you lift the heaviness of our hearts. May you mend the broken hearts. We need your strength to take each day and to remember our loved ones with peace in our hearts. You are our comforter, our refuge, the one we always run to. We ask for strength, for, and for the courage to stand for others and to do what is right. We need you to help us May your love and peace reign in this world so that we will all be able to live without harming each other. As you loved the world, may we also have the same love for everyone. 
and may we always be able to give that love to the world. May you heal all those who are sick. May you comfort all those who are crying. May you bless all the orphans and widows and fill their hearts with peace. We pray for the week that is ahead of us, and may you equip us to face it with your grace and courage. May you protect us from the harm that might come our way. We love you, God, and we believe in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. disciples have been fishing all 
night long. All night long, they've been fishing. When Jesus comes on the boat, is preaching to the crowds, and says, how about another couple of hours? I don't know about you, but it reminds me a little bit of the medical uh, profession right now, who have been overworked and working multiple shifts and beyond their capacities. I imagine the disciples uh, washing their nets, preparing to go home with no fish. The Bible doesn't tell us who's not fed, or the Bible doesn't tell us if they will get paid or not, only that they have fished all night and God prepared to go home with empty nets. And so he says to them, go back. Drop your nets one more time into the deep water, and they catch a miraculous, miraculous catch of fish, so much so that they have to call their buddies from the other boat to come and pull them in. So many fish that will feed so many people, just like Jesus, right? who will feed thousands, multiples, and more, and all. But the disciples have fished all night, and they're exhausted, and we're exhausted. Our jobs seem to be out of control. We're working, we're doing the roles and responsibilities two of two or three others. We're tired, and Jesus says, drop your nets one more time into the deep water where there are schools of fish, sustenance for the journey. I believe that there is sustenance in the deep, deep water for all of us. And so we do drop our nets one more time frustrated, disappointed, exhausted, one more time into the deep, deep water. And there, miracles will be made. You know, the writers of Ted Lasso, and this is our concluding sermon on the Apple TV series that if you're lucky to get on apple.com and uh, be able to buffer those uh, shows, and there is a spoiler alert here from early in the season, and I'm sorry, but it's so good that uh, it needs to be shared especially for those of us who won't get a chance to tune in. But the writers of Ted Lasso go into very deep water. They do explain, finally and in time, where his anxiety comes from, where the panic attacks come from, what's gone on in his life. We learn about the separation of his marriage. And then we learn what happened to his dad. And we start to realize that Ted Lasso might be one of those people who lives with great humor and busyness and funny chatter because there's so much residing in the deep that it is too painful to go there. But I think there is sustenance in the deep and so does the good doctor who shows up to care for the team. The good doctor shows up and sits up high in the bleachers and watches over the ball field and watches how the team interacts. And we use that image for God, don't we? Saying that God is the loving parent in the stands, cheering for us, bidding us. And good doctors bidding us success. And the good doctor is there bidding us to go deeper into our stories and into the work and into the scriptures so that we can make meaning that is both literal and, literal and highly symbolic to understand that those schools of fish are not just food for so many, but there are schools within us, in the deep place within us, a school of our soul where our life can speak, our soul can speak, and where God knows us, meets us at that point of need. 
And the writers for Ted Lasso will unpack the trauma and unpack his avoidance of the meetings with the doctor. And the relationship, the deep, deep relationship that's formed there. Ted Lasso's one of those characters who feels, um, reveals how intelligent he is, but in some of how he acts, you kind of wonder sometimes, because he's silly and a little goofy, you wonder how intellectual he is, but then he's always quoting writers and alluding to books. And he owns his racism. When he makes comments, he very clearly says, yeah, that was pretty racist, what I just said. And I think if we learn anything from Ted Lasso, we might learn how to do that. Go deeper and understand the things that we say. Understand the things that we say and to whom we say them. Understand the rubs. Go deeper. There's a school there. A library for our soul. The gospel, according to Ted Lasso, goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And while deep relationships are formed, some relationships get broken, and it is fascinating the way that it plays out, but the writers help us along never to think we know what's going to happen next, and life is a little like that. Just when we think we've answered the questions, the questions are new and changed, and we have to go deeper again and again and again. The We've been holding contemplative worship services. Some call them taze, some call them centering prayer uh, practice. I'm calling them on the bulletin board outside meditation because we are looking to reach the people with new ways of doing things in their lives, new ways of what they've longed for and craving. If I hear one more person say, I should meditate, right? Um, they're the people we might want to reach. One of the chief practitioners of uh, centering prayer in the world uh, the last decades is Father Thomas Keating. Father Thomas Keating, in his practice, talks about going to the deep water within us. When he helps us to go inside, he also says that um, the scariest thing that we'll go through in our lives is being born into this world and how frightening it can be. He talks about that in centering prayer and in contemplative prayer, we go down deep below the surface of the water, the surface of things, and into that deep, deep, quiet place. And then we let the water still. And we know that Jesus leads us, right, to still waters that will restore our soul. And so deep within the water, deep in the water, we pause. Father Thomas Keating will remind us that there is still a lot of debris floating along the surface. There is still a lot of noise. There are boats there is garbage, there is seaweed, and there are jet skis buzzing around, and that they are our thoughts, and that they are our fears and our worries. And if we go deep enough, we can live in that deep place, and we can observe what's happening on the surface of things that has little to do with what's going on in the library of our soul. The school of fish and sustenance that lives there. When we're willing to go deeper and deeper still, we will learn that it is okay for things to have two meanings. We will learn that it is okay to not have all the answers because deep within the well that is within us are other answers, other possibilities. We get below the surface of our lives and we realize that there is a school there as we go deeper and we go quiet in the silence just for 
a moment. We let those things settle. Watch the worry and the fear go by. One of the most poignant for me moments in the series of Ted Lasso comes um, around a daily practice that Ted employs from his very first day on the job, where he enters his boss's room, uh, office every morning and comes to her and says, good morning, good morning. And she sees that bakery box and thinks, oh, goodness gracious, I can't go there first thing in the morning. And he, she opens the bakery box and she bites into that food, that sustenance, first thing in the morning. And she says, oh, my goodness, where did you get that? Where's the bakery? Where's the coffee shop? Who made that biscuit? And Ted, of course, isn't going to give away any of his secrets, right? And morning by morning by morning, unfailing love and thank you and welcome and relationships are being born. And morning by morning by morning, he enters his office with that ba- her office with the bakery box and says, good morning, boss. And she wonders where this guy gets this spirit, this kind of love, this kind of resilience in the midst of his pain and trauma. Where did this guy get this biscuit for crying out loud? And then it's at the end of one of the very short episodes that we find Ted Lasso covered in flour and baking shortbread. Defying every judgment we might have made of him, defying every alternative response that he could have to his brokenness, challenging every possible outcome for his life, he is baking shortbread. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he decided to make dinner for his friends and say, good morning, good morning, and welcome, God is with you. And so it is that we realize that small gestures (laughs) help us to go deeper, when we wonder about the baker, or the potter, or the fisherman. We wonder about the God who bids us to go deeper and make a miracle in your own life. A miracle so much that you're going to be able to go out and feed the people. This is the God we worship. The God who tells us, go deeper. Trust me. I love you. Good morning. Welcome, thank you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
make some room on the table. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people here on earth, and all the company of heaven by our side, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the blood, bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is a gift I give to you to say thank you and welcome and good morning. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, O God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant that's been poured out for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again and again and again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood and the love of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by that same love. Through your son, Jesus Christ, in ministry to all the world, as we proclaim the great mystery through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We have prayed for our trespasses to be forgiven as we forgive those who trespass against us. And because we are a people who believes that there is more, something deeper. Receive this gift this morning of homemade bread. Now, the ushers can pass or we can come forward um, out of safety. We think that delivery and passing is probably, probably safest. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We pray in the precious name of Jesus, a name that is so sweet. Taste the goodness of the Lord this day. Receive the bread of life this day. Thank you. Isn't it delicious? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Know the God who wants to bake and feed you, bring you that close. We are what we eat. 
and we participate in Christ's offering for us that we might live through him. Special word of thanks to Crystal Woolston who met me yesterday and did all the labor of stirring and patting and baking and thickening and bake, oh, all. Thank you, Crystal, for the labor of love. And if any of you are feeling like you, you need the cup, so here's the thing about Holy Communion. There is a way that we are to do this. It is the cup and the bread. We wanted to make this work. We wanted to make this not too complicated. It certainly is more delicious than those cups that we've been using. Remember that God wants to feed you something delicious, that we might go deeper into our lives and deeper into his story and deeper into uh, the experience is of our lives that we might have a story to tell to the world that we might have a light to shine take and taste and see that the Lord is good let's close with our closing song
great mystery. Go out into the world and know that you are loved from a very deep place. Go deeper still and feel that love. Go out into the world and know Jesus, the baker, who feeds us with sweetness, something homemade and from scratch, and the caring of a loving mother's kitchen. Go out into the world and know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit pour through you, that we might share them and break bread and tell the good news. Go out into the world and know the one who is creator and redeemer and the one who will sustain us for all time. Amen.